Hello, welcome to Starlight Talks. I'm here this week with Molly. We're going to talk about autism in the workplace. So if you have any questions or comments related to the topic or not, please leave them in the uh, comment section. And we love to interact with you guys as much as possible. So check out our website, autism.com, for all of our upcoming events. We're starting an online support group, so sign up for all of those. Um, we also have workshops coming up, so register for the workshop Spectrum Experience, where we're going to talk about what it's like to live with autism and break all the, the traits of autism down. Yeah. So, and then I do these live streams every week. So come back next week. And They're amazing. <laughs> watch Chloe. Sorry, I didn't do them last week. Um, I just wasn't feeling up to it. Yeah. Um, so, is this Molly? Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Molly. Uh, I've been on before. I talked about service dogs and how service dogs help individuals on the spectrum and individuals with learning disabilities. Um, I'm, I'm going to decline to say where I work <laughs> just because of the topic um, and s stay away from going into a little bit more of that personal stuff uh but aside from that um, but you could say you the type of job you work like you work in like the yeah. food industry um uh, most of my jobs have been in the food industry uh i've worked at sonic as a car hop and i've worked as a steward and a food prep um as well as a few other side jobs for my grandparents um at their bike shop um doing a little bit of stuff on the cash register um here and there <laughs> um, so you, you work more of like traditional jobs with, yeah. with a schedule <laughs> yeah. where I like, it, am not so traditional. So we thought we, it would make a great, um, discussion. Discussion. You know? <laughs> of uh, comparing the two. Cause I never really did like the job application stuff cause I created my own job. So I wanted to start there with like the resume and the interview process and all of that, that, um, you know, you've done a lot of that in order to get the jobs you have. <laughs> um, and you're doing more of that because you want to further your career in different areas. So, so do you want to talk about what that process was like and how you feel that, autism comes into play in that area? Uh, I feel like the autism comes into play in terms of it is doing job interviews is very causes a lot of anxiety. Um, they they ask you a series of questions uh, and they're typically the same questions in every job interview, such as what's your experience in this field? And I feel like if you say the wrong thing or if you mention that the slight, even the slightest mention of being on the spectrum or having a disability or something as simple as having a service dog they 
look at that even though a lot of places say they don't discriminate i feel like they they do uh whereas well i mean there's an obvious discrimination because the disability community yeah. is like 80 to 90 percent unemployed yeah so if there wasn't discrimination that wouldn't be the case because a lot of the disability community is overqualified for the positions yes. they're in they have gone to college and they have worked really hard and they know what they're doing they're just not getting the positions for some reason yeah i can definitely vouch for that i have i have a lot of knowledge on working with animals i as i said in my other in the previous live stream i was on i trained my own service dog i've uh done an internship with a vet's office um I've done a lot of work with animals, which is where I would like to be, and I've done, gone in for multiple interviews with vets' offices and other areas of working with animals, such as um, dog training businesses and dog boarding facilities and have not gotten one yet so i feel like there's definitely that hint of discrimination of i have a lot of the qualifications for the job and then i mentioned that i do have a service dog and i am on the spectrum <laughs> uh, and then it becomes tough. Yeah. Um, and quite a few people I've talked to that have autism have felt that way. Um, that there's whatever quality they're giving off, even if they don't mention having autism, their interview skills are different than that of a neurotypical. And even if the position doesn't mean you have to communicate, you know, with, with, with too <laughs> many people, they still aren't getting the position because their interview skills aren't, aren't there or they're, um, they have gaps in their resume because of shutdowns and because of different things. And they're not getting positions because of that, you know? So there's, um, or they've taken time off school to focus yeah. on life mm -hmm. uh, and better their life. Uh, or the comorbidities are showing, whether that's ADD, depression, anxiety, um, or physical, like stomach issues. Um, so all those things, needing time off. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, there's a lot of changes, I guess, that people um, need to make and be aware of that um, we, we are qualified. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, Just because people are on the spectrum or people have a disability, it doesn't make us any less qualified to have a typical job. And, and I yes, found the work ethic of those on the spectrum to yes, normally be more yeah. than the neurotypicals. Yes, it's becoming more and more common that people um, go to trade schools and, <laughs> and, or just go to work instead of going to college and gain their work experience and go up the ladder of their work experience uh, instead of going to college. But when, you, when you're having trouble even getting a job, how else are you supposed to do it mm -hmm. uh, at that point? 
Uh, I'm currently trying to go back to school in August for to help with <laughs> help with that. Um, fingers crossed that it helps me get a job in working with animals. <laughs> So how has um, scheduling worked for you? Because I know you have jobs that have like the same schedule of every week and you have jobs that like give you a different schedule every day. Um, so how has that kind of stuff um, been worked out with you? Uh, when I worked at Sonic and when I worked at, for my grandparents, I did have more of a set schedule every day. Um, and I definitely prefer those schedules because they're a lot easier for me with um, being on the spectrum. I don't have to necessarily worry about, um, I guess, changing my routine. Um, as most people on the spectrum and most people with disabilities, uh, they like more of a set routine where they, they wake up, go to work. Uh, yeah, just knowing what you're doing every day is... Uh, come we, home, yeah. take the dog out for a walk, uh, go to bed whatever uh so it's it's been a huge adjustment adjustment being in a work environment where I don't have a set schedule I continuously get a different work time every every week and every day uh, so one day I'll have a morning shift and I'll start my day at five in the morning and then the next day I'll have I'll have a closing shift and my day will end at um, midnight or one in the morning and then I'll have a nine hour turnaround to another morning shift of starting at 9 a.m. and then I'll have, have a shift in the afternoon. Uh, so it's, it's definitely been a challenge and it's harder to schedule around things uh, such as doctor's appointments and stuff like that. Uh, you kind of have to learn to schedule them on days off. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think my um, scheduling change it can be as dramatic as yours because I know you've literally walked into work and they said, we don't need you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where um, my normally isn't that dramatic, but I have um, a different schedule um often every week as well where like uh I work a lot of times on weekends and normally like Monday and Tuesday are my actual weekends um because we have different socials and workshops and all different things on weekends so I normally um in meetings and all these different things you know because I work with the uh clients that have school and work during the week <laughs> so we so my schedule for that reason will switch up um and then sometimes people just don't sign up for things and so that gets canceled um so it can be all over the place and i'll have different people sign up for different meetings at different times during the week so yeah, so my schedule can be all over the place, and I'll, I have speaking engagements, I travel, like, and then I have all, the, like, the different projects I do, which could be, like, anything, like, I could have a film project one week, I could be doing a writing project the next week, so 
in that way my schedule's all over the place and so I've gotten used to when I have the downtime to do the self-care and take care of myself so I'm ready when I don't have that downtime um and being prepared um to handle a transition if that needs to happen from expecting one thing to happen so instead something else happens um and I try to create a schedule that works for myself because I know so I'll say you know what I'm not scheduling any appointments on Mondays because I need a, a day off in my week um so I'll say you know Monday I don't do anything and then Tuesday is my chore day where I stay home and I do as many chores as I can so I try not to fall behind on them but I always do <laughs> um but but I have like some sort of you know, reliable schedule for myself so that I have some expectations um, of what I need to get done and what I've gotten done. And, um, what I, you know, and doing fun things is important. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really important. Um, and so reminding yourself to do those things and to get out of the house for reasons besides work um, is very important. Self care mm -hmm. uh, outside of work is really important. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean, there is loving your job, um, but there is also like fun time. <laughs> I think there uh, needs to be a nice balance. Um, and of course, like loving what I do, I do lose track of time, like working and doing stuff, and that's great and all, but. Um, I need to remember, like, if I have those days where I'm just writing and not leaving the house and doing these live streams, I actually have to interact with people. <laughs> um, and so I make sure that that's in my schedule and I prioritize whatever, like, that those needs are as well and make sure that's in my schedule along with all the, the work stuff. The nice thing about having a job where you are actually out in the workforce and not one that I guess you created. Uh, well, I have the option of going into the office versus staying at home. So, like, the days I'm, like, I'm not getting anything done staying at home, I can go to work. And other days where I'm, like, I can't leave the house today, but I can still do work, I can do that. Where you don't have that option. <laughs> um, you, yeah. you kind of get that privilege of, you know, I yeah. But there's pros of to interacting that. with yeah. people every day, which is a pro. But there's it's also, also a con. con. <laughs> it's also a con because you know, if you're not feeling good, you can't just be like, "No, I'm gonna stay home from work." Uh, um, for me, like one of the pros about leaving school is like I don't have to hang out with anyone that I don't want to. Like, I don't have to be just, like, nice because I have to deal with them for I don't know how many years or how many classes. But, like, you have work colleagues. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, where you have to deal with that still. Yeah. Um, and, like, adults can be just as shitty as, 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 as kids. kids. <laughs> they, they definitely can be. Um, so yeah, there's dealing with people, um, if you're in a job that deals with people. Um, sensory wise, how do you deal? Cause like a kitchen can be a really loud place. And I know I have days where like, I just can't go to a restaurant no matter how quiet it is. So when you're working at one, how do you deal with that? Sensory wise, I manage it for the most part um it's definitely challenging on days when I wake up or just am having an anxiety general anxiety about stuff that I don't know what I'm having anxiety about um or I this last year I was diagnosed with uh, severe migraines after being hit in the face with a golf ball. That's a funny story. 
Um, and it's challenging to go to work when having a migraine. Very challenging because the lights can bother me, the sound can bother me. And when you work in a busy dish room where there's banging pots and pans all day, sound definitely gets to you. You definitely have to find ways to cope with it. Uh, so that way you're not calling out every time you get a migraine. Um, the ways I typically deal with it are... Um, I use essential oils. Peppermint is my favorite. Uh, when I use it at work, people notice, and I've actually had coworkers come up to me and say, hmm, you smell like peppermint. Where do you get your peppermint oil? So I've started a group called the Peppermint Boys at work. <laughs> <laughs> so far there's only two of us <laughs> uh, there's also my migraine medication that I use however I try not to revert to that I try and revert to other stuff before using it, such as my essential oils. Um, definitely wish I could bring my service dog to work, especially on days where I struggle. Um, working in a kitchen, that's a little challenging because there's health reasons why you can't have a dog in a professional kitchen. Um, yeah, come on, guys. so yeah, this is only heroic. there's also that side of stuff of, there are days when it's tough to cope with the surroundings yeah, of being in a physical, as physical job. Um, of a workplace where, where it either gives you anxiety or you have to be there while you're coping with anxiety, um, or, or another medical issue. Um, the way I cope with anxiety while at work is a tap is the tapping method um i'll tap on my chest uh to help with that which is also where when i have my service dog he'll lay on my chest so it's basically like him putting pressure on my chest um Yeah, like um, all the the tools um, of, that I teach, that Danny teaches of autism, of dealing with anxiety, all those kind of things, you can take into the workplace and use as you need. Um, there's there's no reason why you sh can't take that five minutes you need to like deal with those kind of things. I have, in work, I have learned that if you're, there's a certain extent that you need to be open with your leads mm -hmm. and your managers um, and let them know what's going on. Um, I think knowing yourself and catching those things early when will make it easier to recover than if you put it off and go, I'm not going to take a break. I'm going to push through this. 
then you're going to have a longer uh, pushback of that, that your anxiety attack, whatever it might last a day or so, where if you go, you know what, I'm going to take the two minutes now to deal with this um, and talk about it and say, you know what, I'm going to step outside for two minutes, I'm having a, a panic attack or I'm having a sensory thing or whatever you want to say, or just like I'm having a health thing, I'll be right back. Um, and you take those two minutes, you're going to definitely help yourself in the long run. I, in my experience, I've become a little close to some of my leads and some of my managers and have learned which ones I feel the most comfortable expressing when I need something to, uh, especially those more personal uh, issues. Uh, when I first started working at my job, I decided I was not going to mention that I was on the spectrum. And then after a little while of working there and getting comfortable in the position, I opened up to some to some of my leads and a couple of my managers and voiced that I was on the spectrum. And, that, yeah. you know, there are going to be times wow. when I'm feeling overwhelmed and the way that I help myself when I feel overwhelmed or when I am having an anxiety attack um, is to just step out for a couple minutes and take a breather or to um, <coughs> do some self-care, like go out, <coughs> like step away from where I am and do the tapping method. Uh, for a couple minutes. Um, and it has definitely been a tremendous help to feel comfortable with those leads and those managers because now after I've been in the same job for three years and now I'm able to um, you know if if I'm having anxiety or when I'm having anxiety, I'm able to just look at them and be like, I'm going to step out for a couple seconds. So I'm dealing with stuff. Uh, obviously, there are some times that I can't step out at that exact moment and they're going to be like, can I have you wait a couple seconds or can I... Uh, yeah, wait till like we can find someone to like come in this position or like you know um, finish with whoever you're dealing with or yeah. you know those kind of things. So um, you might not be able to instantly take care of it, but at least letting someone know I need to you know deal with this in a in a few minutes or it's gonna get worse. Um, I think. Just like how I recommend having someone at school that you can go to and say, you know what, I'm having a bad day. Like you should have someone in the workplace, even if it's not a manager or another employee who can have your back and be like, you know what, I'll step in for you for, for the five minutes, you know, that you're dealing with this. Um, just someone to talk to about, I'm having a bad day today. Can you just keep an eye on me? Because I'm going to need some backup. That that's always important to have, just in life in general. <laughs> to have some, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a couple yeah. of those people in life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I think there's a myth that like we can barrel through life al alone, and we definitely can't. Everyone needs help in order to be doing what they're currently doing, and in order to get to the next step in life, everyone has help. Um. If you don't, that's that's absolutely incredible. In like, a super, you might be a superhero. I'm amazed by that <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, we all have help. Um, and so, um, having the ability to say I need help and finding the people 
who you trust to help you and is, who is important. Not only the people who are who you trust to help you, but who are willing to help you. Yeah. Um, and when someone when you don't even recognize you need help and someone goes, Hey, you need help listening to that <laughs> um all those kind of uh, things are important um because we don't always recognize it in ourselves but remembering to do check-ins and make sure you you in the right place and doing the right thing for yourself it doesn't matter if you're at work yeah or where you work yeah, and then um, we get questions about, like, if you're not enjoying your work, what do you do about it? I know I've had, like, questions like that, like, oh, it's just a mundane job, and I know, like, washing dishes can't always be so fun. Uh, <laughs> oh. uh, I know, like, it, it seems like such a fun thing to do. Everyone loves washing their dishes, especially after the e like <laughs> um doing it as a job must be a dream come true <sighs> when i was younger the dishes used to be my favorite chore i will be honest with you now i hate doing <laughs> the dishes uh i used to stand at the sink for hours uh and wash the dishes after eating dinner with my family uh now i prefer to stay as far as away from the kitchen as possible i don't want to cook i don't want to deal with the dishes and that's because i work in a professional kitchen uh so it's no it's not the funnest job uh out there Somebody has to do it for a restaurant. Um, so what, what kind of things do you do to get through it? Do you so, have to listen to music? Do you talk to people? Uh, do, to you, get, do you count the amount of crumbs on the plate? <laughs> <laughs> to get through the day, especially when we're on a slow day, um, we do have a radio uh, when I first hired in. To my job, we did not have a radio because our managers were afraid that the guests would be able to hear it. But since I've hired in, we are we have gotten a radio, so we're able to listen to music now. Um, it's also nice that you know we're able to talk to talk to each other. It's not like we have to work in complete silence. Um, talking to coworkers always helps make the time pass. Um, you know, when when we're slow, we'll sit there and joke around. I mean, not sit there, but we'll we'll joke around a little bit. Um, dance to the music, you know, um, we'll also find stuff to do, uh, such as deep clean stuff, um, especially in a restaurant, there's always something to be done. <laughs> yeah, I think just finding the joy in whatever you're doing that's important and it's just like the little things that can make life better i think so like if you're you're having trouble with that but if like you're absolutely miserable then it's probably not the right job starting there <laughs> um but making the best out of out of the situation i think is a healthy way of dealing with you know i just gotta get through this um and i know we've all done busy work for school and we've all done you know all those kind of things growing up so we can still do it in our job 
Yeah. Um, or it, we've all yeah. had those jobs where, you know, you may not want to be there, but it's a form of income. Mm -hmm. And it may not, it may have been a job that you thought you wanted at a point because it may have been a job that would have helped you get to where you thought you wanted to be. And then you changed your mind of, you know, maybe I don't want to be a chef. Maybe I want to do one of my other passions. And so maybe you're in the middle of switching to a different passion. So you have to hang in with that job. Um, there, there are definitely perks of, having a job instead of just going out and creating, I guess, creating your own job, you... Oh, yeah, there's definitely, like, more stability and pay for you, for sure. <laughs> and, like, so many you things. Get, <laughs> you get that source of income. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for me, there's like a lot of panicking of if I don't get more clients, what am I going to do? Um, if I don't get more paying clients specifically and like all those kind of things, which like you don't have to think about. It's like you don't have to get people in the door of your restaurant. That's not your job. <laughs> you just get paid whether people come or not you know yeah. so there's like a nice stability in that <laughs> um so like yeah there's different perks to like different jobs that you do so there's like jobs by commission and there's jobs by like who shows up and there's jobs just like by hour and so um there's pros and cons to all of those different options um and just knowing yourself and what will work for you. Like, obviously, you don't want to choose one of those that's going to cause you way more anxiety than you can handle in areas that you, like, don't want to be dealing with. So um, not every job is for everyone. And knowing those sort of things about yourself um, is important. And recognizing that when you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Um, all those kinds of things. Just knowing yourself. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's always a good thing. Uh, when you have a, a uniform, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do have a uniform. So how comfortable is that uniform? Um, I mean, you get used to wearing a uniform. They... I find it kind of nice in a way, like, especially if you have to get up early. It's like, I know what I'm going to wear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. Definitely, definitely <laughs> nice that if I have to, on, like I said, if, on days when I have to get up at 5 in the morning, I don't have to worry about. And it's like um, everyone at that job is wearing a uniform, so you can't be like, oh, why did you put that outfit together? Oh, you don't represent us properly, or all those kind of things. You don't have to worry about those, you know, kind of things. I mean, there is the, like, sensory stuff for us, and if the uniform's not quite comfortable, or, like, for whatever reason. Or it doesn't fit right. Or, or it's cold, or too hot, or whatever. I get those kind of issues. But as far as, like, just wearing a uniform versus wearing gay clothes, I think it, that's nice for those kind of reasons. I think my I think wearing a uniform is nice. I prefer wearing a uniform over wearing over being able to pick out your own style or your own clothes. Um, again, because then in the workplace. People can't judge you for how you dress. And you uh, can't get in trouble style. for, for not following dress code. <laughs> yeah, you can't get in trouble for not following a certain dress code. 
Because um, for me, I struggle with, like, what is casual versus what is, like, formal and, like, the in-betweens of that. So I know I'll put something on and be like, I don't know if this is <laughs> what this is. So am I dressy enough for this occasion? Am I dressy so enough I th- for this <laughs> restaurant that I'm going to go or that I work like... at? So I think it would be nice for that reason to have a uniform. I know, like, when I do my workshops, I'm like, am I going to be more dressier than, like, the person I'm, if I have, like, another person who's hosting it with me, am I going to be too dressy compared to them? Do I need to look, like, professional? Can I wear all my colors? Are people not going to listen to me? Like, I don't know. Like, if someone just went, this is what you're wearing, that'd be kind of nice. <laughs> I'll start picking out what you're wearing. I have, like, the the artism that says staff. It's just, like, a regular t-shirt. I'm like, is this just, like, what I should wear? <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know I like question that too much because I just don't know because I've shown up to things and people are like that is not at all formal I'm like oh I'm sorry <laughs> I didn't know I thought it was <laughs> um so yeah in those areas like that's that's nice about a uniform you don't have to think about all of those kind of things that go into your outfit. Or sometimes you know I'll put on an outfit and be like this doesn't work at all but I'll be too lazy to change <laughs> and just like go out in the world in that <laughs> struggle with having a uniform is when I'm you know when I have something planned for after oh, yeah. uh and I either don't remember to bring an extra change of clothes or I'm like eh, I have enough time to run home and change and then I end up not having enough time to run home and change um or other stuff like that and then I just end up going to wherever in my work clothes um there have actually been times where I've walked into a grocery store still wearing my name tag from work and people are like oh where is your hometown located i'm like oh what or they like say my name and i'm like how do you know my name (laughs) it's weird that you address like my grocery store clerk just addressed me by name and i didn't ever tell you my name and then they're like oh you're still wearing your name tag (laughs) oh got it thank you um have you ever forgotten to wear your uniform to work uh i guess yes and no i used to go into work I used to ride the bus to work, uh, and I did not like wearing my uniform on the bus, so I would bring my clothes in a backpack with me. Um, however, where I work, there's also a place where if we forget our uniforms, we can go and check out a backup uniform. So, I guess yes and no. I've never had a uniform, so I don't know what it's like. I don't know. Not even at school. <laughs> no. Um, we I had, never had a uniform at school. Yeah, at school I, I had different dress codes at different schools. Some of them were heavily enforced and others weren't. Um, um, but I never had, there was never like, you need to dress nice. It was just like, you need to be covered. Yeah. Um, and there was like obvious things like you can't have like advertisements for like alcohol or like any ex- like explicit imagery, um, or words. No, you can have words. Um, it's like you can't have like the word sex on your shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
those kind of things. Um, but I don't know, there was like, I don't know, I, I, there were different schools I knew of that did things like you have to wear um, a little dressier clothes, um, business casual, or, um, different kinds of things like that, but I never had had that at my school. Um, but I think it kind of would be nice in a way, especially in the, the older grades if people dressed up a little nicer. I think there would be like some more respect than if like everyone came in their sweats. Um, I definitely also think that like, especially as, as you get into college and stuff, you yeah. know, people didn't, if college kids <laughs> so or college older high school kids <laughs> didn't just go around in their sweatpants and uh, in college, um, I, it living on campus, it looked nicer to not wear sweats and help you um, get nicer jobs. I think it depends on your major. For sure, because being in film, like, obviously everyone wore comfortable clothes that you could move around in and lift heavy things in, which was different from the people in architecture who always wore, like, their pencil skirts and, like, <laughs> very business, <laughs> like, Stuff with, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Eat and I'm them like, to bed. <laughs> probably, I don't know. But, like, <laughs> but, like, if I wore that, while doing film, like, like, you know, you've seen me and my yeah. stuff, like, squatting on the floor and, like, lifting things, like, you'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so I think it depends, like, definitely on your major, um, in that area, like, uh, um, there was the, the, we had a fashion major, like, obviously, they were dressed so nicely, <laughs> and I was like, I can't put in that effort every day. <laughs> I'm going in my pajamas some days. <laughs> Especially because I lived on campus, I'd be like, oh my god, I have five minutes to get to class. I'm just walking straight to class. <laughs> um, Imagine if work were like high school. <laughs> and I guess in some places it kind of is. I mean, I guess or it can be. Yeah. Um, I mean, in my college. office, um, they know I have my chronic fatigue, so they've seen me just like sleeping in on like the office floor or like <laughs> yeah um and like doing different things like that um but I, yeah I don't know if I've worn my pajamas to the office I don't know I can't even remember <laughs> I don't think I have but uh, um but it's different than like when I'm like meeting clients I try not to wear my pajamas <laughs> working with nice clients sex. like giving my lecture could you imagine if like I showed up to my lecture in my pajamas I mean then you would know for sure I'm autistic right <laughs> like, <laughs> at that point you could just wear a shirt that says I'm autistic yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm in the right place <laughs> Then your clients would know you. Were the <laughs> um, I do remember, like for one of my lectures, I had like fatigue so bad that I was just like, when everyone was setting up for the lecture, just like laying on the floor, and they're like, "People are gonna start walking in." I'm like, "Okay," and I like found a chair to like, and I like tried to make myself look somewhat awake, and I was like, "Hey, welcome." I'm gonna speak to you later. <laughs> so yeah, um, the, my the staff that I work with like knows me in a different way. I think than like my clients have. <laughs> um, but but yeah. So so if you're working like in in a space like like that, or like. Um, versus like working with people are who are paying you to do things with them and for yeah. them they're it's different so like obviously like when you're in the the back like you can dance and stuff like 
Or you know, the whereas middle. like we're in the front <laughs> when you're a hostess, like probably not as much. <laughs> yeah. It's a little harder to, you know, go off and do that stuff when you're in the front and uh, it's a little harder to stay entertained when the restaurant is slow and you work in the front. Um, yeah. So the behind the scenes are different. <laughs> uh, I hope that this isn't being informative. Um, so we're not getting too many questions unless I'm just not seeing them. Then I would feel really bad. <laughs> uh, but I'll do some shout outs. Oh, hi, Mom. Thank you for watching. Hi, Haley. Hi, Alex. So, hi, Grammy. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Now I have to say this name. Aquabal? Did I say that right? Aquabal? I'm not going to pronounce <laughs> because I feel like I will mess up. Thank you for joining. But thank you for watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're almost reaching the end of the hour. So please, if you have any questions about working, um, you leave them. And otherwise, we'll start wrapping up. Yeah, this was a nice discussion. So, um, there's something we haven't talked about. Areas where we didn't cover. You guys know areas we didn't cover. <laughs> Um, talked about uniform. uniforms, we talked about scheduling, we talked about applying, we talked about disclosing if you're autistic, we talked about self-care, um, and we just talked about being silly, <laughs> being your authentic self, it's important. Yeah, so thank you guys. Say so also, no matter where you work, you do not have to disclose uh, your disability. A lot of people think that, oh, I have a disability. I have to disclose my disability. Um, that is not true. Uh, if you want to keep your disability on the down low, or if you want to keep it to where you they don't know, you don't have to. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to say anything. We did get some questions. I'm seeing some questions. Um, we did get some <laughs> so we're asked, um, are you interested in becoming a chef? Did I hear you say that? Um, yes. Uh, at one point I was interested in becoming a chef. I am no longer interested in becoming a chef, though. And uh, I remember you saying uh, when you first got the job that you are currently at that um, they were going to help with with you going to college to become a chef or like something about that. Uh, and that's, that was yeah. one of the reasons you picked your job. Um, and then that, that changed. <laughs> um, and that's okay to, like, I think that figuring it out through trying things is, is the most common way of finding out whether you're going to like the field or not is just think, by doing it. I think you definitely should figure out your job through trying instead of, you no, know, 
going to school and spending thousands of dollars on, no, I want this degree and then going into that degree and yeah, I was starting to work on it yeah. and absolutely hating it. And then it's a complete waste of thousands of dollars. I was, um, yeah, I was so surprised as a film major how many people joined film without any, with zero experience of film and had no idea what they were getting into. I definitely think as you're younger, um, take your younger ages and experience with your passions a little bit experience with you know seeing what it's like working in a professional kitchen and if it's something you would like to do uh yeah i don't actually yeah i'm not actually a chef but you know part of what made me not want to become a chef is that experience of what it's like working in working in an, in a professional kitchen um so it it's definitely it's definitely part of taking your younger years and using them to to your advantage of hey i have this passion i'm going to try and get a job in this in this field of working in a kitchen or in this field of working with dogs whether it be dog training whether it be at a dog boarding facility or i want to be a um artist uh shadow some artists see what it's like working at a museum uh see if it's something that you'd like to do before you know going out and committing yourself to uh, that work of X amount of years of more school. Uh, I think and we should bring apprenticeships back. X amount <laughs> and X amount of money too, because also going to going to college, it's not cheap for a lot of places um especially if you're looking at colleges like USC or Yale it's not cheap to get in those uh so it sucks to <laughs> be like hey I want to be a lawyer and then spend billions of dollars going to school at Yale and then get your law degree and be like well, I hate being a lawyer. <laughs> what are you going to do now? <sighs> yeah. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Check out artism.com and all the great events we have coming up. We have, oh, sign up for the online support groups. Um, we have uh, the Spectrum Experience Workshop coming up. Register for that. Uh, we have our in-person support groups and our social, uh, all of our social programming. So sign up for all, all the things. Life map. Um, come back next week. Yeah. So I do this uh, live stream every Wednesday at 7 Pacific Standard Time. So come back next week and we'll do another talk about something yeah so thank you for watching stay colorful bye